Why did God kill Ananias and Sapphira in church? I like these uplifting statements, you know. <laughs> Let's talk about God killing people in church for a second because we're all in a good mood. The church had just been told they couldn't preach the gospel anymore. The church had just been told it was over. And Ananias and Sapphira lived in a parallel universe. That's what you're fighting. Our enemy isn't in Washington alone. It's in every lukewarm church in America. It's in every pulpit where self-preservation has gripped the man of God who is saying, if I say that, it'll divide my church. If I do that, I will lose people. But you don't understand. You are nothing but the best party going on the deck of the Titanic. You're about to lose a nation. You're about to lose your people. You're about to lose everything. And I, for one, am going to tell you now, they are not going to get my children. They are not going to get my family. They are not going to get my freedom. They're not going to have it. Hallelujah. Now I want you to relive the moment with me. Saul has come from the field. He's standing in front of the men of Jabesh Gilead. And they say to him, he asks the question, why are the people weeping? Then the explanation comes. The reaction of the people was to cry. When Saul heard it, the Bible says, the spirit of the Lord came upon him and he burned with anger. That is not one of the current listed fruits of the spirit. <laughs> but to deny the possibility of it, to deny the possibility that in the next few months, unknown preachers are going to rise up and point a finger that's prophetic, not like the toy prophets that are so popular today, not people talking about nonsense or predicting nonsense. True prophets of God are about to come and they're going to look like lions, not babysitters, and they're not going to compromise and they're going to get up in the name of Jesus. You with me? Yes. This moment, when the Spirit of God came on Saul and it said he burned with anger. Believe me, that's not appropriate today. That's not an acceptable emotion for a preacher. It's illegal. If you say that, that's possibly even God. But every single person seated before me is living in the sunshine of a blessing bought by a vessel of God that got angry at the right time. Everyone here is. And I've had it. I've had it. I'm done. I'm not going to be polite anymore. I'm sorry. I, I'm, I'm not going to do it. That's why the media won't come after me because they know that I am not the church of Oprah. I'm not going to do that. I'm not there. I'm going to say it like it is. This nation was founded under the word of God, by the power of God. And the only way it's going to survive is by getting back what we've lost. You stole it, God's going to get it back for us. Now, he took a sword and cut his prize oxen. Said he cut them up in pieces. Now, I did a little research. I talked to people in the know. A prize oxen is big. You know, uh, there's a head of a buffalo here in the lodge. When you look at it and you realize that's not Bambi. <laughs> that thing is huge. While it's still alive, the same power of anger came on Saul and he supernaturally cut up the oxen into pieces, put it on carts and sent it throughout Israel. And he said these words, whoever does not join the battle, such will I do to their sheep and their oxen. For Saul, 
to cut up a prize oxen is the equivalent today of a televangelist taking a chainsaw to his Rolls Royce and send pieces everywhere. Like, this doesn't satisfy me anymore. This isn't enough. See, I'm word of faith. Look at me. I'm word of faith. And for many times, we look at Brother Hagen through a filter, and we don't realize what he really meant and what he was really. The prosperity message was not born in prosperity. It was born in the Great Depression. He did not want faith to be a materialistic message. He never wanted that. Everybody that ever told you that was just too lazy. He didn't believe that the object of faith at that time was just for money, and that's the case. It is. It is a part. Prosperity is one of God's blessings. And until we don't have bills to pay, I thank God that he gives us money. <laughs> Second, healing. The ability to say by his stripes, we are healed. How many of you believe in healing? A very well-known evangelist who had gone through a season where he believed in faith and then suddenly lost his faith in faith, had just come back from a large crusade in the Philippines and he made the mistake of having dinner with me. And, and he's, we're sitting there and he goes, you know, my brother, I could not preach prosperity while I was in the Philippines. I said, why? He said, well, they were so poor. So I looked at him and I said, well, did you also not preach healing because they were too sick? You see, faith, prosperity, healing are all biblical truths. What I'm trying to say is nothing against faith, but what our faith is for now. And that's what happened. Saul is standing there, they're crying. They said, they're gonna destroy our children. And the people wept, but Saul is standing there and the Holy Spirit is behind him. And he goes, ooh. That's when he went into being a butcher. That's when the pieces went out on carts. And that's when three 150,000 soldiers were galvanized in a day. I have a late news bulletin for the devil. I know the church is divided. I know the church is lukewarm. I know the church looks harmless to you, Satan. I know that you believe right now you've got it. You've got America, you've got it sewn up, but you don't understand the God who comes out of nowhere. Listen to me, I'm going to tell you, there is a God that could unify hundreds of thousands of Christians overnight, overnight. This, this con convention, this conference alone has the firepower to go out in the airwaves and people will watch this video and watch our brother's video and all that have spoken here and suddenly you'll feel the oxen being cut up and the pieces go out and you'll understand we can no longer be the fools, the clowns, the bystanders, the also ran. We are gonna wake up now and in the name of Jesus, we're gonna take this nation back. We're going to take it back.